So you've sat there, you've done your research and you're trying to figure out how much humidity do I need for my isopods? How do I regulate this? This website says this, this website says that. Well, today I'll show you how you can even figure it out for yourself. Welcome back to Bug Realms. On this channel we like to discuss all things creepy crawly. So if that's something that interests you, please consider subscribing to the channel. So I have here another isopod setup. If you want to see how I did this, make sure to watch the previous isopod video. But today's feature isopod is the Porcelio Hasi or Hasi, however you'd like to say it, a Spanish isopod. And this is the high yellow version. Really, really cool species to have. Now, this particular species is from Spain. So they're okay in drier environments than some of the other species. Now, for example, your dwarf white isopods, they would like it humid all the time, pretty much. And Spanish ones like this, as I said, they can do a bit more prolonged dryness than other species. So how do I figure all this out? You know, one saying that this one's kept moist, one saying that this one's kept dry. How can I work this out? And there is one simple method that I'm going to show you today. So you want to do your substrate mix the same as I showed you in the previous video by having your rotten white wood, your leaf litter and the special ingredients. Now, if you don't know what my special ingredients are to the isopod substrate mix, then please make sure to check out the previous video talking about isopod substrates. So you've got your setup as we talked before, a bin of moss in one section, some leaf litter, your cork bark for them to hide in, your rotten white wood, your substrate, all the stuff we've already talked about, all that goodness, but I can repeat it as much as possible because they are really key elements. Now when it comes to watering, do you remember what I said in a previous one? We will water the opposite side to our airflow section in the side of the enclosure and we will pour water, not mist. So here we go again. I am pouring water just along the edge with the moss. And the moss will hold the water, maintain that humidity. And you'll see that by pouring it, it kind of comes down the sides. You see that wet patch all the way around here? Whereas the other side remains dry and that's exactly what we want. Now this alone is the key element to finding out how humid your species of isopod like it. But how? You're not telling us how. Well, it's simple. You do your research first, obviously. If it's a drier species, you keep less moisture in. If it's a heavy moist species, then you make sure to water it a lot more often. That's the basics, but how do you know if you've got it just right? Well, by placing in your isopods, you will observe them over the course of the week and you will see which direction they go. So being Spanish isopods, it's quite possibly more likely that they will spend more time this side of the bark and over by this leaf litter than they will the moist side. And that's because they're happier in a slightly more drier, arid side to the enclosure. But they still have that moisture variant. They still have that humid side to the enclosure when they need a drink, when they want to be in a damper environment. So check on your ice pods every couple of days, guys, throughout the course of the week or two and see which side they regulate to. If you find that they're spending all their time in the moisture side, then make sure to bring out the moisture level. I've got mine to about here. Bring it out even further. If you find they're on the drier side all the time, then make sure your wet side maybe pitches in to just a singular corner or maybe two singular corners, but leaving the vast strip to the side drier for them. And that's pretty much it. That's how we'll regulate humidity in the enclosure. I cannot say that enough that you must observe your animals to see what's best for them. So the key points that we have just made, guys, you're wet, your wet side of the enclosure, you leave your other side to dry out and you watch them, you watch and observe. It's really, really important that you do that to find out what suits them. And over time, that will kind of stick in your head and you will know straight off the bat, this species likes it more humid than this species based on where they hang out. It is the number one method 
I can possibly give you guys because nothing is more important than using your own eyes and your own brain over listening to what people say over here on YouTube or through a book or through scrolling through internet pages where somebody's just providing you vast amounts of information and it just gets you confused. Don't ever stick purely by what somebody tells you online. Even me, even in this, you find your own methods. This is the best method I personally can think of and to share with you guys. So now you guys don't want to listen to me talk right any longer. You want to have a look at these high yellows. Why are they called high yellows? Well, you're about to find out. So as I said in previous videos, these have just arrived to me all on the same day and I'm going to be rehousing them all on the same day. There we are. Now you can see exactly why it's called the high yellow. Remarkable, absolutely remarkable. Look at that coloration. Was well, there another one on the underside there? There is. You could have got away from me. So let's pop these in. <laughs> right in the hole. And you, please, come on. That's it. Yeah, look at him. Sat up by that rock. <laughs> that one's hilarious. Just pop my head in the hole. Really, really cool species. Right, these are actually a bit bigger than I thought they were going to be. I thought this was a slightly smaller species. Now, uh, these were bought from the spider shop. There are plenty of isopod companies I plan on trying out in the future, but the spider shop at the time of recording this, oops, had an actual deal on to get money off of isopods. Now, you can see. These have actually gone to the underneath, which would be the slightly more moist part of the tissue. So that's how they were regulating. Some were sitting on the top, and those that needed a bit more moisture, or maybe they were just going to darkness, went to the bottom. But that's what the cork buck hides in for. It's to allow them that darkness. One on my hand there. Shall we put one on the tabletop to have a better look? There it is. Our P. Hassey high yellow. Striking coloration for an isopod. Yeah, so we didn't want to be in the light, so let's get you home. Try and do this one handed. Let's get you home. My battery is actually about to die. Hopefully, I get to finish this video off first. But here we have them our Spanish isopods. You can see some are staying on the tissue. Now, as I did in a previous video, I leave the tissue on the dry side of the enclosure to dry out. And then I can remove that tissue when they no longer want to hold on to it. Don't leave it too long though, guys. You don't want any uh, mould growing on the tissue. But there we go. Wow. Almost kind of like Simpsons styly. Really, really cool, right? So there's 10 in here, that's how I do my starter cultures. There is one culture that I'll be featuring that only contains 5 isopods, but I'll explain that one when it comes to it. So, before my battery dies, I'm going to leave it there. Remember guys, keep an eye on your animals to regulate them properly. It is the best way you can ever learn about any species you keep, whether it be tarantula, whether it be mantis, whether it be stick insects or isopods you observe you learn you adapt and that is how you can become one of the best keepers in the hobby at least in my opinion so there we have it thanks for watching guys i hope you enjoyed the isopod series let me know in the comments below if you do or even if you don't just so that i'm aware cheers take care bye bye do you guys want to see what else dwells in the realm? If so, make sure to pop back weekly for multiple videos. My usual upload days are Wednesdays and Sundays, so I'll see you guys there. Oh, and one more thing. If you want to become a disciple of the realm and have your name shown on the screen like these lovely people, you can do so in one of two ways. You can scroll down the screen now and hit that join button next to the subscribe to be a channel member. Or alternatively, you can follow my link in the description below to my Patreon page. Both methods grant you access to my private Facebook page, where we like to discuss even more things creepy crawly. 
Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.